What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, JB, here tonight with a review for Marriage and Medicine, Season 7, Episode 8. It's titled, Food for Thought. So, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into the episode. All right, you guys. So, um, I'm going to start this out with the kind of small scenes where it wasn't really a lot I believe I'm going to start out with Dr. Jackie, so she should be behind me somewhere on this side. She could be on this side. I'm hoping she's on this side, but it's Dr. Jackie that I'm starting out with. Um, so Dr. Jackie, so we see her. She is meeting up with her, um, her contractors, and they're going over, you know, the ideas for her house. And she, there, so it looks like there's going to be two phases of her house. So it's a phase one and it's a phase two. I think phase one was going to be about $130,000. I didn't get it down. I think it's $130,000. And I think phase two was between $80,000 and $120,000, which, which would bring her about $260,000 to maybe um, $300,000 for um, the renovations. So we see her they're talking about this. And Curtis Lurch, I wasn't understanding him because, you know, he keeps talking about sticking with the budget. And I'm like, what budget are you paying for this? Like, are you footing the bill for everything? Or is Jackie putting her money into this? Pretty sure it's Jackie, but okay. And I think he needs to let Jackie have this because, you know, um, Jackie said something in this episode. And she also said it on Watch What Happens Live last week because she was on Watch What Happens Live with Ianla. And I think with Jackie, I think, I'm not going to say she's overcompensating, but I feel like, you know, she's trying to fill a void in her life. Because we all know that because she had breast cancer, she never got the chance to have kids. So I feel like this whole renovation is kind of like her, you know, fulfilling a need. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say fulfilling a need. But I, I'm, I think it's just, you know, helping her deal with the fact that she never had kids. Because she did say that she um, wishes that she had kids on Watch What Happens Live because somebody called in to ask that question. So, you know, I think Curtis should just shut the fuck up and let her do what the fuck she wants to do. This is her money. Yes, it's your house, but I mean, if she's footing a good amount of the bill, let her have what she wants to have. That sounds fair. I mean, you cheated on her. So let the woman have what the woman wants. Moving on. I should have grouped Toya and uh, Mariah together, but I'm not. So next, we're going to talk about Toya. So... In this episode, Quad, it, it was a fo it was a episode kind of focused around Quad, basically about her cookbook and her birthday party. So Quad is having a a, a party for both her cookbook and for her um, what did I just say? Her birthday. So Toya is getting ready for the party, and Eugene is talking to Toya about the party, and it's a white party, so they're getting dressed. And Toya feels some type of way about going to this party because Mariah wasn't invited to the party. And I'm sitting thinking to myself, why are you taking on Mariah's beef with Quad? Like, that has nothing to do with you. Like, if Mariah is a grown, mature woman, she will understand. She'll be like, you know what? If y'all go support Quad, that's cool. I, I don't have no problem with that. You can't expect for me to go support her. But if you guys want to support her, absolutely. fucking Lula. That's y'all's that's y'all's prerogative. I ain't going to tell y'all. Like, it, 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 feels like for, it feels like when it comes to Toya... Toya is trying to draw a line, a line in the sand that she's just on Mariah's side and she don't want to fuck with Quad, period, point blank. And I'm just like, that's stupid. You ladies are in your 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 late 30s, early 40s, or maybe me in your 50s. Like, are we really about to sit here and play that game of, oh, you're not friends with her. If you're not friends with her, you're not friends with me. And because my friend has an issue with you, I can't come to your event. I think that's mad corny and mad stupid. Like, come on. Like, I would expect for Toya's kids to do that. I would expect for Mariah's kids to do that. I would expect for Heavenly's child to do that. Like, I would expect for the kids to do that, not these full grown ass women. But moving on. Next, we got Mariah. So, like I said, Mariah wasn't invited to. Um, Quad's party. So she and Aiden and her kids and family, they're celebrating Ramadan. 
I salute people who who um, celebrate Ramadan. I have a good friend that celebrates Ram, you know, celebrates Ramadan every year. There's absolutely no way that I could do it. But I salute those who do do it. Kudos to you guys. My hat is off to you guys. It just wouldn't be something that I could do. So we see Mariah. She has her mama there who needs to burn that wig she had on. Lake was there. She needed to burn that wig that she had on. And then some of her other friends. So she immediately brings up these drug allegations. I'm like, oh my God, we are eight episodes in. Why are we still talking about this? Mariah, you went and took a drug test. It says you didn't do the, do the drugs. Can we please leave the fuck alone? I get it. You want validation from the women. They didn't validate you. Let it the hell go. They did not validate you. And then for them to say, and then for Mama Lucy, and I think late to say that the ladies have picked a side. Technically, the ladies haven't picked a side. I, the only person that I could say really 100% has picked a side is Heavenly. But before this, Heavenly and Mariah weren't even rocking with each other. And I know people try to say Jackie's chosen a side, but I don't necessarily know if Jackie has chosen a side. I just think that Jackie is tries to be neutral, but she's just not on her own. She's just not, you know, checking for Mariah. She ain't swiping for Mariah. She ain't, you know, inserting a chip for Mariah. She's just not here for Mariah, period, point blank. So I don't, I, I guess you could say she's chosen a side, but I, I think she wants, I think she wants to try to be impartial, but she's not completely impartial. But for them to just keep digging, like, and for Mariah to say, you know, this is what Quad wanted. Well, if you know that this is what she wanted for you to keep talking about it, why are you still talking about it? That doesn't make a lot of sense now, does it? No, it doesn't. Let's move on. All right, so let's talk about Simone. So, Simone. So, Miles wants to transfer school. So, you remember, he went to um, Howard. I think he flunked out of Howard. So, he's at Georgia State, which is a really good school. So, now he wants to go from Georgia State to a school in California. So, Simone and Cecil go to talk to him. And, you know, um, <clears throat> Simone is like, well, you know, to get into that school... You got to have the, the grades. You got to have the like the academics to get in there. And I'm thinking when she said everything about um, Miles in this episode, I'm like, he wants to go to this top notch school, but he he doesn't come off as. And then also, you know, um, early in the episode, but you know when they opened it up, he she said you got homework. He says no. Well, he says or he says she said he, she hasn't what was he going to go do go do some homework. He said, I think he said, no, he's going to go watch a movie or something instead of doing his homework. And I'm like, wait a minute. Huh? I would have told him, no. We're paying for this school. You go do the homework right here, right now. Like, I ain't playing no shit with you. Don't flunk out because that is my money. And that's... <sighs> I mean, I'm not judging him because I was once 20, 10 years ago. And my first year of college, I did goof off. But after that, I got on, after, after the point that I had to pay for my own classes, my out of pocket, that's when I started taking school a little bit more seriously because I graduated high school at 17, went to college. I was, I had just turned 18, so I'm not going to knock him, but he's 20. And, you know, Simone was talking about how they have to wake him up. They have to make sure he does his homework and then they wash his clothes. I'm like, wait a minute. What? Like, Geraldine, my mama, she was not going to go for that. Like, I started cooking at 13. I started washing my clothes. I forgot what. Not long after that, I started washing my own clothes. Um, When it came to high school, she did wake me up for school. I ain't going to lie about that. But when I got to college, she no longer woke me up. When I got to... Yeah, a piece of hair just got in my mouth. Oh, God. A piece of hair from my beard just got in my mouth. But um, when I got to college, she didn't wake me up anymore. So what would happen is she would hear my, she would wake herself up at six o'clock in the morning, every morning, and I would set my alarm clock. You know, from whenever I had to go to class, if I had a class at eight o'clock, I would wake myself up at um, seven thirty, because it didn't take me long to get to my school. So I wake myself up at seven thirty. It wouldn't take me long to get ready because I've taken my bath the night before, and I've had my clothes pre-ironed. If I was going to wear something, you know, if I was going to dress nice, I would have that already. 
But, you know, so she knew how, my mom knows how, how, knew how I was. I would wake myself up with my alarm clock on my phone, but I have a habit of going right back to sleep. And she'd be like, Jerome, are you up? I'm like, I'm up, mama. Because I would, and my door would be closed, but I'm like, I'm up. She's like, okay. She'd come back a few minutes, because she know, and then she know I'd go back to sleep. She's like, are you awake? I'm like, yes, I'm awake. I'm just sitting here watching TV. But she never had to get on me about that. And then to do my homework, no. Like, that was something that I did regardless. Like, when I got to my junior and senior year of college, I had a, uh, uh there it is. That's not hair. What the hell is this? That must be a piece of chicken. Ew. Okay, back to the show. Um, excuse me, y'all. But um, you know, she would she wouldn't have to get on me about that because I would make a I would plan out like I would have my daily planner. I would plan when I had homework a homework assignment to do. I would plan when I had a paper due. Like I would be ahead of it so that way the day that it was due I could just turn that shit in and be done. So I, you know, when it, and then laundry, I I don't want I don't want people touching my clothes, so I do it myself. I think they need to just stop babying Miles, and he'll be fine. Honestly, stop babying him. That boy be fine. Let him be a man. All right. So next we are going to talk about Contessa. So Contessa and her family they go out for dinner. Um, so they're joined by her dad, whose name is Gerald. We met him last season. So, you know, she's talking about how, you know, she had to drop out of the program because she had to be there for her family. And she asked her dad, does that make her a quitter? And he said, you know, Dr. Scott tried to chime in. She says, no, I was talking to daddy. And she's like, well, daddy, how about you come down here and help out with the kids? And Scott was like, um, no, he got his own business that he needs to take care of. Like, let him do that. Now, here's my thing when it comes to Scott and Contessa. I think, on some level, I think maybe they should have had a conversation about this. Because remember, last week's episode, she, she said that um, it was cheaper for her to go there, and it was only a one-year program. I think that they could have made things work out. I just think that they, I think that they maybe lacked communication. Now, my thing with Contessa is, Contessa is kind of wishy-washy. Because remember, last season, she took off because she had the mommy guilt. No, no shame in that. But then she went back to work by the time the reunion came last year. And now she's in school. Like, I think Contessa needs to figure out what it, what kind of... She's trying to fill a void. I don't know what void she's trying to fill. But I think Contessa needs to look and see what am I missing in my life? What am I trying to over... What am I trying to fill in my life? So, I just think that she needs to do that. Just reevaluate her life and figure out what she's trying to fill the void in. So then um, we do see Contessa. She takes her dad to Dr. Heavenly to get some new teeth. And um, his teeth look nice. I will say that. But I was slightly confused. So they just did the top row of teeth. But they didn't do the bottom row of teeth. Like, and his his new smile is, is nice. But the top and the bottom, they just didn't mesh well. But that's neither here nor there. And while we're talking about teeth. So... In Heavily's um, green screens, we noticed she got a new set of teeth. And her teeth, it's like they don't fit in her mouth. Because she's talking as if like she got some dentures in her mouth. And the glue is just about to fall off. And her teeth are just going to fall out like Mama D's teeth fell out. Whoever did Heavily's teeth, I think they need to go back and redo them again. Because I don't think they're settled correctly. Just saying. Moving on, you guys. And lastly, we got Quad. So we see Quad. So Quad is at Barnes & Noble. She's doing the book signing for her book. I don't know the name of the book. Um, and we see Buffy there. We see Contessa there. And we see Dr. Heavenly there. They're there to support her. And I don't know why Heavenly had to shade her. Because, you know, she's talking about, you know, her puppy business. That shit went under. Her friendship with Mariah didn't go too well. Her marriage. Bullshit. But this book, good. Um, so then, you know, they talk to her about her birthday party. So she's having her birthday party and her book release party at the same time. So it's going to be a two for one and it's an all white party. Now, me, honestly, I can never do an all white party because I'm a messy person when it comes to food. I get everything. I get stuff all of my white clothes. So, you know, on top of the marriage to, marriage to medicine girls being there, the sister circle girls are there. Selena Johnson is there and um, Rashawn Ali. So, you know, um, 
Now, this conversation was so weird when it was heavenly, it was, um, it was heavenly Toya, Jackie, and Simone. So they were talking about, you know, remember, I think it was, I don't forgot which season it was when, um, when, um, Simone said that she didn't want to, you know, see sort of go down on her and come back up on her, come back up to kiss her because she didn't want to smell the smell. And I'm like, why does your vagina have an odor to it first and foremost? But that's neither here nor there. But, um, you know, they they joke about that, talking about what their vaginas taste like. Uh, and then Toya was talking about, you know, she mixed hers with some alcohol and some other stuff. I'm like, what? Moving on, because that, that just really didn't make any sense to me. So, you know, Quan, she goes and changes her clothes, and she um, comes back out, and she has to thank her girls. Now, the girls she started out with were her sister circle girls, which is Selena and Rashawn. And I'm like, wow, you really did shake the fuck out of these girls. And, you know, to, um, so Toya, Simone, and uh, Eugene, they dip out. Contessa did show up. And so it was Contessa, Jackie, and um, Heavily left. But she does eventually thank them for being there for her. And I was just like, okay. I mean, you could have called all of them up there. You could have said, can I get, like, um, where is Jackie at? Where is Simone? Where is Toya? Where is Contessa? Where is Selena? Where is Rashawn? Can I get y'all to come right here? And you could have said, you know what? Last year in my life, it was a difficult time. I almost gave up on everything in my life. But these amazing women right here, my sister circle girl, Selena, and Rashawn, and my, my castmates from this show, Marriage to Medicine, Heavenly, I was just about to say Mariah, <laughs> Heavenly, Jackie, Simone, Contessa, Toya, they were all by my side. You didn't have to single them out show by show, but it is what it is, you guys. And that was Marriage to Medicine, so be sure to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button so that you guys know when I drop any other videos, and also share the video, and I will see you guys tomorrow for Love and Hip Hop.